I'm the exact opposite. This is like a hot potato to me. <laughs> if you uh, put me in a classroom full of grade four students, I'm good. This is really different for me, but uh, I am honored to be invited here to speak on behalf of caregivers, one of many caregivers that are going through this journey on Prince Edward Island. Uh, my journey and my parents' journey, my family's journey with dementia began in 2010 with my mother. Uh, and if you told me in 2009 that I'd be sitting up here five years later, I'd be shaking my head no. But uh, this is where I am and it's been really an incredible and surreal journey to go from that point to this point. Um, in 2010, my mother was diagnosed, uh, and you know, at the time, it felt like something that was happening very quickly. Uh, one week, she was looking after my kids after school. They'd get off the bus and run into Grammys for milk and cookies. And the week into summer vacation, I got a panicked uh, call from my father saying, you better get down here. There's, there's something going on with your mom. And uh, that's where it started, in, and uh, we're still going down this journey today. Um, it's a difficult journey. Uh, there's no roadmap because every case is different. Uh, so you do your best as a caregiver. Uh, by doing your best as a caregiver, does that mean you're not going to make mistakes? No, it doesn't. You'll probably make many, but there's, there's no other way to go about it. You seek help, you seek support, you look for answers, you talk to people that are gone through, going through the same things. Uh, but as I said, all the cases are, are very, very, very different. Um, from that day in 2010, we went through the procedure of getting her officially diagnosed. And there comes initial relief with that. We now know what's going on here. Uh, but then you wonder, okay, what do we have to start thinking about? How fast is this going to move? How much time do they have where they can still live independently in the home? And you start helping them to navigate through these key life-changing decisions, hoping you're giving them good advice, not knowing if you are. Um, that's been one of the most difficult things for me, is, and it's something you have to kind of try to step away from, is is the guilt that comes with making these decisions for those that have made the decisions for you your whole life. Uh, you want to do your best for them because they did their best for you. But these decisions aren't always going to be the right ones. And I've made some good ones, and I've made some that in hindsight I wish I'd done something differently. But you can't dwell on that, and I'm telling that to myself as much as to you. <laughs> uh, because it's difficult. Uh, tried to keep my mom and dad together in the home for as long as I could, but you could start to see how fast things were progressing and that the home was going to be unmanageable. And so we say, let's, let's downsize. You know, we'll sell the home, we'll move you into a senior's apartment, and you know, that will make life easier. So you think that decision will make life easier, but this disease is not forgiving and the changes that you think or you hope will make life easier sometimes make it more difficult. You've changed the place where they've lived for 30 years and you thought, you know, this would make a positive impact. So it's difficult. Um, when I knew I was going to be asked here today, I really struggled to think about what I wanted to say. I said, I'll just make some jot notes to kind of keep me on track. But when you, the pen starts going and you start to think about everything you've gone through in the last four years, when mom was diagnosed and taking her through all these steps of trying to make it better, and now she's in long-term care, and then not one month after she's in long-term care and you've separated your parents, you look at your father and you say, something's not going very well for dad right now. And he was holding it together for so many years. Because the diagnosis came in 2010, but hindsight lets you see this had been going on for so much longer. And when I knew the focus of today was going to be stigma, I had to really be reflective to see how that was appropriate to my parents' case. 
Because initially I wasn't sure it was. But as I started writing down their story to kind of keep me on the track here, I realized that they probably had been suffering with this disease much sooner than that. And the stigma wasn't the diagnosis of dementia. The stigma was that they had dementia, which caused them to behave and act differently than they had their whole lives. But we didn't know why. So you had family members and close friends for a lifetime running, you in, running into you in the grocery store saying, you know, I haven't seen your parents around. They used to be so involved. They don't go to the Celtic festivals anymore. You know, They're, they've stopped their volunteering. Uh, we asked them out to the cottage and they came up with these excuses that just seemed like excuses. And so you start to make excuses for them. Oh no, don't take it personally. And they're just, they're becoming more private as they get older. But in hindsight, you realize they were going through this change and this was their way to cope their way to avoid people realizing that there was something very serious going on with them. And at first it was my father kind of watching out for my mother. And he did the best he could for as long as he could. But once we had her in long-term care, because there was no other option, he couldn't hold it together anymore. And you saw that he was suffering as well. And he was admitted to long-term care with frontal lobe dementia this past summer. So it's been it's been a surreal uh, it's been a surreal few years, and uh, when I look back on it, it's full of potholes. This journey it's full of obstacles, and there's no map to tell you where they are. You just have to feel your way. Um, it was almost a relief. I, I started. A, I'm sure some of you know this Christmas card campaign for my parents, where I shared a story that my mother used to to love this Merrick One Thirty Fourth Street and. To, I asked friends on my Facebook to kind of share cards with them, send them some cards, to kind of recreate that Christmas magic. And it took off like wildfire, mainly because so many people can relate to this struggle, and they ended up with over 24,000 cards. <laughs> and when I look back at it, it, it really put their story out there. These are my parents, they are suffering with dementia, they're doing their best, but the disease has taken its toll, and for those that had asked those questions, what's going on with your mom and dad? There was the answer. And so the stigma really didn't come from the diagnosis. Actually, that, that became kind of, oh, okay, now I understand. And those people that my parents had distanced themselves as they battled this disease have come back into their life as a result. So that's been a really positive aspect for this. So uh, it's... It's a, it's a difficult journey, and uh, you're going to make mistakes along the way. You can't own them. You just have to move on and, and continue to be there to support your loved ones in every, in every which way you can. And uh, know that you're doing your best. And, uh, and it's just it's, it's a difficult process, and uh, it's difficult. Uh, I can work listening to your remarks about being one of two. I'm one of four. Uh, and the youngest, and the only one on the island. So the decisions that had to be made, logistically, they had to be made by me. Uh, but I was very lucky because there were hot spots along the way where I would have disagreements with my siblings about what the next step ne needed to be because I was making some pretty big decisions or helping to make. And there were some flare-ups with my siblings, but that's because we all love our parents so much. So it's very emotional. Uh, so you're going to have that, but you know, you get beyond it and you kind of laugh about it afterwards. Because I was here mostly, so I saw my parents every day, so I could see there's something going on. There's something big going on. But my siblings who are from away, from Germany, Boston, from Halifax, they didn't really see it that clearly initially. <clears throat> so when I started talking about, well, I think maybe we need to look at a, a better living situation, you know, there's, there's not always going to be agreement there. But uh, in hindsight, you know, we've come to realize that those decisions needed to be made. Uh, I guess that's, that's basically all I have to say. It's a, 
just that um, it, it is very, very difficult and it, it's hard to talk about without getting emotional because these are the people that you love. And when the disease does get to a certain point, you know, you have less of those 17 days. I remember those 17 days and they're, they're very, very precious, you know, they're, they're precious. So I, I, know, I don't know now, I go in to see my parents frequently uh, and it's, I, I just never know what kind of day they're going to be having when I go there. You just hope for a good one. And when you do have one, you make the most of it. And if you don't, you say to yourself, there's always tomorrow. Thank you.